you had a you know a late li- night last night and are still getting over it <laughs> like you have you have a hangover on wow <laughs> just tell me i look like shit <laughs> no i am the one that usually looks and i continue to look like shit all the time but you always usually like made up like-, like i feel like maybe you didn't have any zoom meetings today <laughs> Oh my god, no, I actually went into the office today. Oh my god. Yeah, you're so cute to be like, usually you look good uh, because you go in public places. And I'm like, no, I did today. I went to multiple offices today. Oh, oh no. wow. Okay. I've been walking Looking around to- with this face all day. Oh, so, so maybe it's it's you're just coming off of all of that. So you're tired. Are you saying that I look like shit? No, I'm saying that you look like um a princess. <laughs> Are you saying that I don't support And women? a bitch? <laughs> what else? <laughs> you look I, tired. That's all. I I'm the, I, I always look tired, but I've always look I've been like, oh look, Noor, Noor looks so put together every time. Even oh, if it's like nine that. in the night that we record, you're like all put together. <laughs> like I look no, like I think- shit at all times. It's so funny because I'm literally wearing makeup too. So like really? I'm shocked that right now you think that I look better. Were you in the hot you... sun? Because you look tired. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. You want There's... a friend who tells you the truth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. I'm I'll sorry. just talk about you. No, I was. Ju- I just blurted you know it out is? because usually no. I come in and then when you log off and I'm looking at myself, eventually <laughs> I stop looking at you and I'm looking at myself. I'm like, oh, shit. I look like shit. <laughs> no, and actually, I was going to say that mm-hmm. you look really like uh, glowy today. So- oh, really? I don't know. Yeah. It must be. It, it's the lighting, guys. It's lighting. All right. Well, anyway. We are recording a little earlier than usual. We are. You, yeah, exactly. You know what the other well, thing is? I think later by a day, but earlier than usual by time. Yes. <laughs> but you – so here's the other thing. I think that usually if I'm recording with you in the evening, I do my skincare routine. Ah, and so maybe my yeah. face is looking really moisturized yeah, when I have Yeah, you always moisturized and glowing and there's a nice sheen to your face. Oh, yeah. You know. Right now it's just dry. Okay. Well, anyway, let's get into it. We're talking about Real Houses of New York. I love that we are – okay, here's what I love about this cast. And I don't know if we're going to get this ever again unless you start a whole with a, another whole new cast. Yeah, it's the first first year. First year glow. I like that nobody actually has any loyalty to anybody on this show yes. right now. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Everybody is happy to talk shit about somebody else Mm -hmm. as long as there's ears Mm -hmm. to hear, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if you've got ears that work and will listen, I'm going to say some shit about the person that just left the room. And I think that that is something that was like really obvious in the early seasons of New York. And we got to watch it over multiple seasons because we didn't have social media. But – now I feel you can only do that the first season of a new cast. You can't do it multiple seasons. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's the first season glow up, right? Um, yeah, it's like it's they have had their nighttime routine done, so they look all shiny and new and beautiful. And they are um, they also haven't looked at any of the social media, and they haven't been affected by the fans. And they're, um, they, it, it's a brand new experience for them. They're trying to see the other side. They are probably all being paid equally at this point. Mm-hmm. There's no favorites. Um, they're all trying, all of them are trying to hold on to their, make sure that they get a second year. And mm-hmm. they have been, all of them have been under enormous pressure because they knew the fans would compare them to old Roni and that they had to all play together and bring bring themselves to the plate, but also play well with each other, even though they're not necessarily naturally friends, right? Not it's not it's not organic yet. So yes. um 
this is something that they are all aware of, I think. Except for Jessel. I think Jessel is only aware of, hey, I need the next year. I need to... I need to bring everything to the table at this point. Now, can I just say, <clears throat> as much as it um, hurts my desi auntie, you know, um, jeans, I am actually very impressed with Jessel. This is what? I... It is the fourth episode? Fourth episode. Or f- fourth yeah. episode. And almost all the women are talking about Jessel. Like yes. she's become the center of all of their stories. Yes. And she's, she's been apple. smiling through all of it. She says it's the weirdest incredible. shit. She says the most rudest things and she gets away with it. This is, it just, Jessel, it reminds me so much of Alex McCord. She reminds me so much of Alex McCord, well, especially how they are treating her. Because, yes, right, Jessel but Alex definitely- was in the center. Alex was still, you know, trying to stay on. And Alex was still trying too much. Jessel seems to be doing now, she's, this episode, she sort of sailed into it very seamlessly. And without any trying too hard. All of a sudden, this episode, Jessel didn't have to try too hard. Everybody is talking about her, and she's in the center of the thing. And she's still going strong. The way she went at Erin at the sit-down, she's still going strong. I am it's just, just stopping her. The if there was a graph of or a you know a line chart of like what our oh, feelings like Chelsea, were, Chelsea it was a no- yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> just like Chelsea does. Yeah. It would be a nosedive down and then yeah. straight up to the sky right now for Jessel for me because mm-hmm. I'm shocked at how much I'm loving her. Okay, let's get into right. the episode. We open back up on Bryn's giving. Oof, very sad. Very, very oh. sad, the story she's telling. And she yeah. shares this, like, very complicated relationship she has with her dad. And I, like, started crying. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, you know, not to get emotional, but we're going to get emotional. It's very – you know, I, I always say like, yeah, most of the show is great because it's, you know, catty women mm-hmm. being – people being catty and like bitchy and all that stuff. But there are moments on this fucking show, this fucking network where I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, shit. Now you triggered me into a feeling I didn't think that I was going to be tapped into. And people don't realize that like, yes, recently we have a lot of young people that binge Bravo during the pandemic and now they're yeah. fans and all that stuff. But for women who have been watching Bravo since the beginning, because you have been watching this show, uh-huh. like when, when Bethany was on, you were Bethany's, you were younger than Bethany, but like she was more your peer at the time when Roni premiered, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. those were women that you identify <laughs> with or you re- identify with these like a complicated Sometimes I adult, feel like adult Vicky things. was my peer, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> that's how it feels. Sometimes I feel like a, <laughs> I was, I was childless and mini manless, but I felt like Vicky was my peer. <laughs> Because That's how you were old going I around feel asking sometimes. people, do you have a job? Get a yes. job. Get a job. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Bryn talks about this, like, complicated relationship she had with her dad just, like, a year or two before he died. And, like, he mm-hmm. said sorry. And he – and it's – I don't know. I thought, I thought it was beautiful because I have talked about this before. Like, I'm, you know, it, I'm getting ready for – the end of my relationship with my dad because he's probably not going to be with us very many years longer. And I spent my entire life being very angry at my dad. Mm -hmm. And then now in the last, let's say two or three years, I really come around to like forgiving him and still acknowledging that like the way I grew up was fucked up. But Mm -hmm. now being able to say like, man, they were just people who are trying to fucking figure shit out mm-hmm. too. And they yeah. themselves have had a lot of trauma and they made a lot of mistakes and they probably beat themselves up over it more than we could ever understand because we didn't know, you yeah. know? And so I thought it was really nice that Brynn yeah, opened I up think, the uh, it, it have, I think it's true for everybody. Um, love and hate can exist Um simultaneously for the same yes. person you might hate something about them but you love them as you know for who they are there's always a mix of that with so many especially with family members um all the things that frustrate you you can still look beyond it and look at the threads of 
where you where you love them unconditionally mm-hmm. as well. It just exists, yeah. coexists at all times. It's all about holding on to the threads of love and letting go of the hate and, you know, just letting that be. Acknowledging it, but moving past it and just letting that be and holding tighter to the threads of love. That's all you can, that's all you can do. That's all that's in your control. Beyond that, there's nothing um, that is in your hands or in your control. You cannot do anything beyond that, right? So yeah, w- listening to Bren talk about how um, she forgave him and she had, uh, she was able to get some kind of closure at that point. But at the same time, um, the fact that she tries to be a happy person and she likes to focus on the joy and not on all of the darkness. Now you kind of understand where she comes from where she is bubbly at all times. Maybe some of it is like forced and some of Mm -hmm. it is almost like, you know, a security blanket for her to be that way. It's deflecting from the darkness that she might be experiencing. Yeah, yeah. So they're having a nice time. Everyone's bonding and crying and wiping each other's tears. And Jessalyn tells the ladies that she's going to be hosting a cocktail event slash fundraiser at her house. And it's no pressure if you can come, come, no big deal. She yes. says that a couple pop of in times. And pop out, she says. Pop in and pop out. Nothing serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and like a pop in and pop out uh, party. I love it. I don't like to have a pro- – yeah, I don't like – I don't want to be – uh, asked to come at a certain time and then I am forced to stay longer than I want to. I have a dinner I'd rather tomorrow. come in when I want to and then leave if I'm not ha- if not ha- I'm not having fun. Well, so I I decided to do something. I have a dinner tomorrow with like some girls that I see sometimes. One of them mm-hmm. is a very good friend of mine and then she has some friends of hers that mm-hmm. I've gotten to know too. So I'm having dinner with this group of women tomorrow and I already texted my friend and said, hey, we're meeting up at like 630. I said, hey, I'm going to leave by 830, just Mm -hmm. so you know, because I've got family coming over the weekend and I have to prep for them. And it was so nice for me to be able to say that ahead of time because – and she was like, oh, yeah, cool. No problem. Do you want me to move the dinner up earlier? And I was like, nope, the time is perfect. I'm giving you two hours of dinner time. We're going to eat a meal. I'll make some jokes. I'll charm the pants off of all of you. And then I'm going to (laughs) leave. And I love, like, I've never been able to do that before because in my mind, I always think to myself, well, I've I've said yes to a dinner. So now I need to sit here until we sit and the place shuts down and it's 11 o'clock and it's a fucking Thursday night and I'm exhausted and like, I got to get home. Like I said, I set my boundaries ahead of time and she was really understanding and respectful of it. Right. And it was fine. And I'm yeah. I'm like, you know what? That is that's maturity. That's growth. Yeah. Like yeah. it and but also and maturity I, on your part to do that upfront and yeah. set those boundaries, right? Not just her accepting it, but also you setting it. And but being okay uh, and yeah. being okay approaching your friend with that because in when we are younger, you get paralyzed. You you don't want to upset them, you don't want them to feel bad. So you yeah. put up with a lot of shit. Yeah. Well, I'm not that young anymore. So <laughs> And I Okay, think we have established of- you look tired and you're not young. Okay. I you know what you could say? I am definitely giving old hag today. No, you're not. It's okay. You, you just look tired. It. I thought I thought it was all the partying you did with Donnie. That's what I was trying to oh, refer to. But okay, you went all, you took it real serious and then I was like, Well, you kinda look tired. <laughs> Okay, I did not do any partying with Donnie, but our our love, our version of party, partying was we went to eat that angry chicken parm that Frank Catania ordered from Batarga in Hawthorne, New Jersey. <laughs> then we swung by Envy, which, by the way, no price tags on anything. Like, <laughs> so it was just so, so funny. We were looking at a bunch of like Envy merch and the lady uh-huh. girl, the little girl working there goes, we have more sizes in the back. And then we uh-huh. walked out and I said, Donnie, did she say that? Because she looked at us and thought those two are not going to fit into the sizes that are available here. And he was like, I don't know, but I think that is what she meant. And I was like, great. <laughs> And then we went to Rails and we got dessert there and we had carrot yeah. cake at Rails. And, and it was did amazing. you just miss Jennifer and um, and Teresa or something we along those lines? We were hoping that we would run into them, but we did not they went somewhere because else. they were at a Jennifer Fessler event, apparently. Oh, 
Yeah, I know. Um, anyway. Your calendars. Your calendars weren't matched. You have to talk to your people and then have them <laughs> yeah, talk to it's horror okay. people. I, it's okay. <laughs> we were like, do you see cameras? Are there any cameras? There's no cameras. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so back this dinner, everyone's having a nice time. And then Aaron comes for Jessel about the, the Hamptons cackling hags. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, but I feel like Aaron is being so – she's – it's the epitome of sensitive pain in the ass snob mm-hmm. who thinks that she is not a sensitive pain in the ass snob. Like, correct. It's wild. This is somebody that within two interactions, people will start walking on eggshells around them and they think that they are uh, cool because they never get upset. That's because people are bending over backwards not to upset you because you're so sensitive. Exactly. You remember the first episode, Sai said, Aaron always has problems with people. Right. Here we go. Like, this yes. is now I see why. Because, yeah. and then she says something about if Jessel is work. She's like, oh, you're working? And Jessel's like, yeah, I am working. What are you yeah. trying to say? Like, what are you right. talking about? And I think is Aaron thinks that she's coming off funny and she's not. Like, do I think cackling hags is a big deal? Even Jenna was like, I don't think that the way that yeah. Jessel said it was a big deal, guys. It's yeah. not a big deal. And then Jen- and she says, uh, like- and then um, Jessel says, well, I was just being, you know, it's a British humor. And I was just saying that you guys were being like old cackling old hags. And she's like, oh, now we are old. I'm like, yeah. okay, this thing where everybody starts taking on, like for last week, Jessel said, oh, am I a bitch to Pavit? And now yeah. Aaron is like, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. But Jessel says, yeah, I said it. And then Brynn is like, yeah, so just admit it. Did you, did you, do you take it back? And Jessel's like, no, I don't take it back. I said yeah. it. So what? Like, let's just move that's on. That's where right? I was like, oh, that's where my opinion on Jessel just changed. Like, yes. in an instant, I was like, she's owning it. She's yeah. not trying to be fake. She's owning it. She's like, this is who I am. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with her being a rude you know, monster, spoiled child. Yeah. If she just says, this is who I am, and then just keeps going with it, and she Correct. doesn't take offense much um, to the point where she's, like, upset about it, but she just, she's she has her insecurities as well, because when when Aaron said, so you, you, you're working? Instead of saying, you went back to work? That yeah. would have been a different one, right? If you said, yeah. oh, you went back to work. That would be different from saying you're working, which is almost like, oh, I didn't know you work, right? That kind of yes. a thing. So it's yes. a slightly different, but Jessel clocked that attitude and she got very sensitive about it. Through the, but she didn't, I think there was the attitude coming from Aaron. Oh, absolutely. Aaron says right. in confessional, Jessel, do, Jessel doesn't think about the repercussions of what she says. And I would love to take a pause here and talk about repercussions specifically related to Aaron. So Aaron was on a podcast this week Mm -hmm. and apparently on the podcast, she quote unquote explained her Trump donations by not really explaining them. She said that she supported him early on because of the Israel thing. And then later on, she changed her mind because she's allowed to change her mind. She said that her parents campaign for Biden. Mm -hmm. She's a liberal. The Mm pro-life thing was a big deal to her because she said Planned Parenthood actually saved her life in her early 20s. And so that's why she changed her mind. But what she did not explain, Erin, is why she was donating to this man in November 2020, well after it was established that he was a shitty president and that he was telling people to inject their bodies with bleach and he was um, saying that he wasn't going to accept the election results if they didn't go in his favor. So I don't think that Aaron understands the repercussions of anything because Mm -hmm. if she's going to sit here and fucking lie about why she continued to donate to Trump by not even explaining herself, she can go fuck herself. So Mm -hmm. I will say that watching this episode, I was immediately already team Jessel because I was so annoyed with Aaron watching Mm -hmm. this episode. Right. Right. Because, like, what know. do you know about repercussions, bitch, if you're fucking <laughs> voting for Trump? Suck a dick. You want to talk about repercussions? You voted for Trump, and he put two staunchly pro-life uh, people in the Supreme Court. So go right. and fuck yourself, you right. stupid bitch. Sorry. Yeah. 
I got no, wrong. No, no, you shouldn't be sorry. I find her to be entirely, um, entirely tiring to watch. Yes, yes. That's like how I feel. I'm not. I like don't feel teddy. hatred towards that. I think there are enough number. I mean. We know 50% of the population is voting Trump and they are trying to vote Trump, at least, you know, and the difference is just a couple of uh, percentages here and there. There's enough number of people that are doing that. So for at at any given time, you take a sampling, you're going to find one or two um, Trumpers in in any random sampling. So if you take a sampling of rich New Yorkers, I would expect that there would be one or two or even more. Uh, Trumpers. So in this sure. case, it's one so far that we know of. But what I'm saying, I, I don't find that as, I don't find her, I don't hate her and I don't find her, um, I don't, I, I, I don't get angry with her. I think there is something to watch. Um, I think I might enjoy Jessel taking down Aaron. Mm-hmm. That might actually bring some joy to me. So I, I'm okay yeah. with her being there for that. But Watching a Jessel scene or watching her complain is is quite tiring for me. It's it gives Aaron, me right? yeah. Teddy Mellon cap. Yes, cap. exactly. That's it's what it gives teddy. me. It's very, very Teddy. Um, they also at the table talk about Jessel's sex talk, and Bryn tells the girls that like cargo pants, hand jobs are back. And <laughs> Uba says anything that has a job is something I don't want to be doing. And I was like, I love Uba so much. <laughs> I do. Every time there was like she was sobbing when um um when we were t- when um uh what's her name was Brynn. talking huh Bryn Brynn. was talking about her life. But once everything cleared up, Uba was like every time there is some kind of some kind of you know levity to be introduced into the scene, it's Uba. Uba yes. sort of like it, it, as tensions rise. Uba says something that makes everybody laugh and this sort of the tension sort of diffuses. So I'm happy that Uba is there because she keeps that show going from Uba one is, one one pl- one scene to another. Uba is the actual comedy that Sai thinks that she's bringing. Like yes. Sai is annoying and Uba <laughs> is hilarious. Yeah. I think that's how it goes. Speaking Sai of Sai. Sai is a try hard. Sai yes. is trying hard. Um yes. Aaron is not a try hard. Aaron is just bitter and, you know, miserable. Uba yes. is actually um, very, she's very light and very happy and very yeah, confident. A breath of fresh air. Yes. yes, exactly. Um, Sai shows us how to be an influencer. And I didn't really care about this. But the one thing that I was very surprised to see is that she does offer health insurance to her employees. Yeah, that's Good nice. You. Good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just That's more yeah. than Sonia. Sonia offered her interns. They got a pickle jar. They got nothing. Speaking of interns, did you see that Bethany said that Raquel got paid, that her interns, Bethany said her interns get paid more than Raquel gets. She should hire Raquel. Raquel. She should hire Raquel as an intern. Uh, could you imagine? Absolutely. She rehab that her. girl. Rehab that girl. She's skinny. She can skill, sell skinny girl. She looks <laughs> just have her take her under your wing bethany and then you know just you know work with her you be the new vanda pump to her why don't so you do that raquel allegedly got paid three hundred fifty thousand dollars to be on vanda pump rules and Ra- and bethany says that her interns get paid more than that wow i fucking have bullshit. a phd fucking phd <laughs> i have a fucking seriously what do i have to do to get that job then i don't know I think only, <laughs> I don't know. See, this is why my, you know, kids nowadays, they want to do Instagram and social media and do that kind of work because that should pays. Well, it yeah. pays with very little skill set. And so honestly, I don't know if I'm just that poor, but if I was getting, if I got a $350,000 lump sum or whatever, at, or amount of money given to me, and the price of that was that I fucked my friends. Uh, boyfriend, boyfriend, and then I had to like fade into obscurity. Uh, give me the three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, really? That. Yeah, that's uh, no, that's that's a very small amount. I oh. would ask for more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny three hundred fifty thousand dollars won't last you long, girl. I know, but if I'm like fading into obscurity and like living by myself off the yeah, grid, that's, that's like a, a, that's, a, that's, a, um, that's a couple of million dollars is fading I into know. obscurity. 
I so, know. Yeah. Um, also, she said that, you know, the whole Indecent thing is – proposal. A- <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> well, Bethany is trying to be like – you know, Bravo exploited this woman and it's so hilarious because, you know, Bethany probably made like easily $10,000 just today on her mm-hmm. podcast streaming. And I don't yeah. think that Raquel got paid yeah, any no, money. Yeah. Like, ah. and, yeah, sure. Bethany's not at all exploiting her. <laughs> you know, I was thinking today, it's complete sidebar because we should be talking about the episode, but because you brought up Bethany, I was thinking that when we first started podcasting, you and mm-hmm. I discussed who our problematic favorites were. I think yours was yeah. Rena and mine was uh-huh. Bethany. Both yeah. of them have gone beyond being problematic favorites. They've yeah. just become complete problems, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. So I think that you and I need new problematic favorites. We do. We do. Yeah. Well, my current is Candace Dillard Bassett. Oh, okay. <laughs> my favorite is, Karen you know, uh, the Grand Dame. <laughs> And she's my not problematic. problematic. And my problematic one is Shannon Bedore. But who's my <laughs> problematic favorite? I have to think about that. <laughs> I literally watch OC only to watch Shannon Bedore. I don't I need to her. watch anybody else. I don't like anybody else. I just want... I would like a reality show just with Shannon Bedore. Her trying to lose weight, date people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just, you know, just get an ounce of confidence in herself. That's all I need. Like from year to year, you just can measure the confidence level in her. I, I would agree. watch it. I think she I represents every middle-aged woman struggling to find who they are, and especially menopausal. I know I know what she's going through. <laughs> I feel like I'm going through that myself. So well, I just, you, yeah, I identify with that- Shannon Bedore. <laughs> I'd rather identify with the grand dame have you seen her most <laughs> latest pictures she looks amazing she looks 20 years old i know i know she's i don't know what's going on i don't know if raven's doing her photoshop i don't know what the hell is going on there but oh my god i need i actually need shannon and karen to link up because karen could use some of like shannon's like maybe you need to bring it down a notch yeah. and then like Shannon could use some of Karen's confidence because yeah. nobody is more confident than Karen. Huber. No, no one. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I don't okay. know who my problematic favorite is. Is it Giselle? Maybe it is Jessel. Oh, maybe it's Jessel. <laughs> Gis- Giselle is usually, I like Giselle. She could be one, but I think it could she be is. Jessel. I think she is. I know. Yeah. Or Lisa um, Barlow. Oh, I know. There's that so many lady. People. Yeah, I know. All right. So <laughs> Jessel and Aaron meet for a coffee of an up and coming Tribeca. <laughs> and Aaron, I have to say, is a New York snob. Like, you know, she's like, oh, Jessel doesn't get New York. She's not from New York. And it feels to me like she's saying that because this is Real Housewives of New York and she wants yeah. people who are from New York. But like, did you not watch the original Real Housewives of New York? There weren't people right. who were like, completely new york either ramona and sonia refused to go downtown because they were like we're not taking the subway so i don't think that like aaron really can argue over here and also it's annoying because later on when aaron repeats that story to like the other girls she's like she was shitting on my neighborhood i'm like i don't think i aaron you're so fucking sensitive yeah that like you're reading so deeply into this but it did crack me the fuck up because Jessel, where do you, where where have you been that you think Tribeca is up and coming? Like it's as Aaron is ridiculous for being sensitive, but Jessel is wrong for saying that Tribeca <laughs> is up and coming. <laughs> See, Jessel coming from from uh, being a Brit and coming from there and looking at where she wants to live to hobnob with the rich and famous. Yes, pick Chelsea because yes. she sees old money there. So yeah. she's picking that. Tribeca is is it's a different kind of vibe and a different kind of money that yeah. is in Tribeca. So so she is Jessel is trying to say I live with old money and you don't. And but you came there, you bought your way in there and you tried to live there. But Aaron actually lived there and moved to Tribeca just because that is more happening. And that's more, you know, 
it's 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 a lot younger and it's a lot you know more fun and all of that right so well chelsea i will say is not old money chelsea definitely right now is like a very it's i i know a lot of i don't personally know them but i know that there is a lot of south asian tech people that ah. live bitcoin people that live in chelsea yeah so the south asians also have a weird way of classifying us, what our is, people have a weird way of classifying, you know, what is uh, nice. wealth, wealth, yes. and where you live. Like, if I go to the Silicon Valley, people look down upon me because I'm on the East Coast. Yes, West Coast and being in Silicon Valley is the best thing for a yes. South Asian. And if you yes. don't own a Tesla, then you are definitely not worth talking to. Correct. Yes. Yes. So that's so. that's the thing, right? Like I think that they're just looking at different like standards of what means with it different means to be. different lenses. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and so Jessel asked Aaron, is everything okay? Because Aaron wasn't as warm to Jessel at Bryn's giving as she was expecting her to be. And Aaron tells us that she doesn't understand Jessel. And she also tells Jessel that you're so different than me that it makes me uncomfortable. And I'm like, Yes. That's not fucking nice. Like, that's a crazy thing to say to a person. Like, hey, yes. I'm just – I'm trying to figure out what happened because you weren't as warm to me. And Aaron is like, oh, I don't understand you. We're just, yeah. like, not the same person. Well, just, I, and here's, in defense of Aaron, okay. she's not saying – she's not lying about how she's feeling. And sure. she's not lying about how Jessel acts, that she acts like every, she's spoiled and she's never heard no. And so she can say whatever she wants to say and get away with it, right? So Aaron is not wrong about that. But here's the thing. Aaron is also not telling what she telling Jessel what she wants from her. What she oh, wants yeah. Jessel to say is, I'm sorry for complaining the entire time I was in the Hamptons. Yeah. But it's also annoying because Sai made fun of the house the entire time. Uba and Sai complained the entire time that they mm -hmm. weren't fed. Jessel was ready to go home. She wanted to go home. Yeah, she didn't want to be there anymore. She wasn't. And she wanted to go home anymore. because of all of the talk about her sex life, but she, she got exactly. a little out of hand. Exactly, she got uncomfortable. Yeah, and it's annoying because Aaron acts like I don't know what we did to make Jessel upset. I don't understand her because one minute she's acting like she's fine, but she she says she's fine, but she's acting so angry. And it's like, well, what about how you're acting, Aaron? Mm -hmm. Aaron says that Jessel has been. Um, always catered to and Jessel yeah. says so what are you calling me a princess yeah and it's really and funny in that moment I felt like Jessel has been called a princess by so many people in her life she knew where this conversation was going exactly exactly <laughs> anybody who reacts that quickly to be like oh okay I see where this conversation is going um but it's so funny because Aaron is talking about how Jessel has been catered to meanwhile last week she was telling us how her mommy would sell buildings to fucking brad pitt and then she would go to the ballet go fuck yourself like <laughs> that's so annoying it's yeah. so annoying and then but then also on the other side jessel tries to pull off this i'm an immigrant who came here with <laughs> no Meanwhile, she went to like, the off. most prestigious private all girls private school in london like she's she obviously has money like <laughs> it's just so funny because they actually but she said that, but that she said that they that line to Sai. She's like, I'm like you, I'm an immigrant. <laughs> yeah. Sai's like, do you know what the dollar store is? And Jessel's like, yeah, the ATM. <laughs> I think what's happening is that both Aaron and Jessel are actually the same person. Yes. I think that they both are very privileged. I think they both come from a lot of money. And I think that they're both deeply insecure. And no matter what another person says about them, they immediately take it as a dig. And that is why they don't see eye to eye with each other because they are actually – like the mirror is shining too bright. Right. Right. I think they took the both of them took two different routes to get – um to showcase themselves on the show – um, Aaron took the "Hey, I'm nice" fake route, fake "I'm nice" route, and Jessel was the true "I'm a monster" route. And Jessel's <laughs> approach has won so far because <laughs> Jessel has become she has become an instant favorite now. She exactly. like all of internet. That's who they are talking about. Everybody <laughs> in the on the show is talking about Jessel, not so much about Aaron. And everything that's come out of Aaron, come out about Aaron, is in complete opposite. 
um, of what she's tried to portray on the screen. So yes. it's that that difference of who who she is in real life versus what she's portraying is also not working to her um, advantage. But otherwise, they are literally the same person, I think. Yes. Aaron says that Jessel doesn't want to take any accountability. And she also and calls Jessel, Jessel is like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah. I agree. And, yeah. And then she – just so they just like awkwardly leave and then Aaron says she's a lunatic and she's a fucking lunatic and she's so weird. And I was like, again, Jessel – I mean, again, Aaron, you want to talk about accountability. You still haven't explained to us why you were still donating to, donating to Trump four years after you realized that he was actually a bad person. So right. please right. take accountability for that. Right. And um, yeah, <laughs> I think after um, – there hasn't been a sit down like this since the Bethany and um, yeah, I know the I'm here, you're here. I know that's what right. I felt like I was watching. Yeah, I was like, that's what I so felt good. like. This is like so reminiscent of that. And I thought this scene is going to go down as one of the best scenes in Housewives, you know, history at some point. So it's like the way she, the way that you know, uh, Jessel kept pushing and poking Aaron and Aaron couldn't because Aaron is trying so hard to come off as the likable nice one and the polite yeah. one Aaron could not bring out her claws and so she had to sit there and take it <laughs> so it was just exactly. absolutely funny to watch the whole like I work and I'm yeah. so shocked that you would say that I don't work as a working mom or whatever. Yeah. And then Aaron immediately says, what are you saying? That I don't support women? And she's no. like, and I then, never said that you don't support women. Like, And then she's like, watch it. Yeah. Aaron's I was like, crazy. what are you going to do, Aaron? Aaron is so mean. And I love that she's pretending like she's not. It's great. Um, yeah. Jenna Lyons is selling her clothes. And all I could think was that Marlo Hampton should link up with Jenna Lyons mm. and start a La Archive New York edition. <laughs> I was looking at some of her clothes and I was like, oh, damn it. If if they were only about 10 sizes bigger, I would fit into them. They would look so good on me. All of she her has skirts, some good stuff. All of her skirts, if I wore them as dresses, would fit on me because she's like a good, I think, foot taller than both of us. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't. I don't think the skirt circumference would even go around <laughs> my boobs or above my boobs. I think I cannot wear them at all. Maybe around my neck. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um then Bryn Sai Aaron meet for coffee and essentially this is when Aaron mm -hmm. is gonna talk shit about Jessel and this is what I mean about none of these girls have any loyalty to each other because shockingly Sai and Bryn who Aaron was fighting with in the beginning of the season while she was mm -hmm. actually out to dinner with Jessel right is now are now the women that Aaron is going to to talk shit about Jessel and they're right. shockingly on Aaron's side yeah. Aaron again says Jessel is a word salad chat bot, which I was like, again, you dated president. I mean, not dated. You <laughs> voted for president word salad. Yeah. So I don't understand where you're coming from talking about Jessel being a word salad, you know? Well, she put all of that in the rear view because of the Israel issue. She didn't care <laughs> about any of that. None of that mattered because she's in one, you know, one issue water. Which by the way, a one issue water is also pretty annoying to me. Like uh, how do you how do you just have one opinion on one issue and that's all you're going to vote on? Oh it my just god, it makes sense to me. I'll tell you later when we're done recording, but my mom did the most annoying thing. You know, I'll just tell you right now. Yeah. My mom did a really annoying thing the other day. She had a knee procedure and I was bringing her home from it and we we're in the car and talking and somehow policies came up and she said, "I'm not going to give the Democrats my vote this year." And I was like, "Why?" And she was mm -hmm. like, because at least when the Republicans are president, they don't give a shit what's happening around the world. When Democrats are president, then they get way too involved in international politics. And my mom claims, which is a complete conspiracy theory, that Imran Khan, the president, the PM of Pakistan, was ousted <laughs> because the Americans convinced the Pakistani army to do that to Imran Khan. And I was like, so I said to my mom, well, why don't you just move to Pakistan then if you right. care so much about what's going on there? And she's like, I'm yeah. not moving there. I haven't lived there since I was 21. And I said, okay, so, so why do you care so much? Why do you care so much? 
And she said, because that's what matters and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, well, when um, I can't get an abortion because I have an unviable pregnancy and I die or my kids die in school because there's guns all over the place, Mm -hmm. just remember that you love Imran Khan more than anybody else and you're more scared of gay people than you care about your own children and your grandchildren. And my Mm -hmm. mom was like dead silence. She was like this fucking bitch. (laughs) My mom was like – she just got quiet and she said – Fine, I'll think about it. I was like, <laughs> you know, because they don't. My mom does that too. My mom says something and then I correct her and give her a different point of view. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I haven't thought about it. So at least our moms are, they yeah. come up with something. But then when you tell them something else, they take a moment and pause. They're not fighting us, to be honest. They are like listening. It's just that their view and their their view is so narrow and so it just requires them to see the rest of the view and who they are listening to. And it all, it comes down to controlling, not controlling, but exposing them to a lot more uh, worldview than they are used to. So yeah. it, get, it gets very, um, it, it, it's, it's hard with older folks to have that conversation. So I can see that across the country. It's, it's frustrating for younger people, especially somebody who's grown up in New York City Mm -hmm. to be having those having just a single issue where none of the other issues seem to bother you because they don't affect you that's what you're saying basically that none of the other economy guns uh you know uh, pro-life versus pro-choice gay rights none of them are really affecting you yeah and so you just want to do something that gives you a feather in your cap in your community and that you can talk about and so you just you just pick one that is random and say, that's my one issue that I'm going to work with. And I wanted to share that story so people know that, like, I'm not just coming for Erin because she's uh, has a problematic political views. I come for all my friends and family who, including my own mother, <laughs> who also has problematic political views. OK. Oh, God. Um, do they ever. Erin <laughs> <laughs> says everyone is walking on eggshells with Jessel. Bryn says all it would take is for Jessel to say, yeah, I said it. Now what? And I'm like, but Bryn, she did do that. She did that at Bryn's giving. And Sai says, obviously something is going on. She's going through something for her to be behaving this way or for her to have behaved that way at the Hamptons. And I'm like, yeah, it was – you guys are all harping. (laughs) Yeah. Number one, I think that she's just cranky. And number two, I think that you guys are all coming for her about the sex thing. Yeah. So like and also if you guys were all upset about how she was behaving with Jenna's gift and then Jenna forgave her, then why do you care? Right. Right. What's what's her face? No, see the the Bryn is the only thing Bryn is worried about is how the very first episode Aaron came at Bryn and everybody said Bryn shouldn't have done it and Bryn had to apologize. Bryn is holding on to that. She's like, I'm yeah. being treated differently. And so yes. every time she is commenting on Jessel or she's commenting on Jenna or anybody else, that's where she's coming from. Sai, yeah. on the other hand, doesn't seem to have a backbone at all. She doesn't seem to see one way or the other. She just flows with whoever she's with. She tries to be on their side. Um, and I think that's going to get her into trouble in the long run because she doesn't seem to have an opinion that is, um, and in all of her confessionals, she's, she's one of the meanest. So when she says things in the confessionals, they are really, really hard. They would be harsh for a friend to hear. So I think Sai is going to be in a lot of trouble in the second, uh, second season for sure. Yes. And, um, I also want to note the fact that like, This whole, like, again, walking on eggshells with Jessel thing, when Erin is telling the story about her conversation with Jessel over coffee, um, she's like, oh, Jessel, then she started crying. Jessel wasn't crying. Did you see Jessel crying? She had tears welling up in her eyes? No. No. She was perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. That was just, yeah. Yeah. Erin is full of shit. She's Um, full of shit. Jessel has this event for the no. Can we just talk about the no for a second? I called this yeah. out on Twitter because I think I mentioned this last week too, how I went on her Instagram and I saw the company, the yeah, no yeah, PR, yeah. Told me that. and it yeah. only had one post and yeah. I was very confused about it. Does and it have more posts now? Does it have like no 500? New posts. Because- <laughs> nope, same. 
And somebody, online... but if you went to the website, does it have more? Like you know, somebody like me, I would be, I would have a proper business, but not have anything on. I may not have done anything on um, Instagram yet, but also, I also see the fact that she's in PR, so she should. Exactly. I don't even yeah. get the no. Exactly. I only get so the no. There's, there's this person that. <laughs> There's this person that I uh, follow on Twitter and I communicate with. Her name is Shy. She's uh, fly shy. She's really funny. You should go follow her. But she she mentioned something which I thought was so funny and so on point. She was like, you know, we've all been there. We're like we have immigrant parents and they're always asking us if we're working. So then we just like make stuff up to like get them to shut up. Like, you know that Neelam, okay, yeah. Jessel's mom is like – Oh, you came all the way to America and you know Rajesh Uncle still has that job that you could have had in London and your cousin Seema is doing really well in Manchester and you didn't have to move all the way to America and I don't know what this company is that you're working no, on and but also, is anything even you know so yeah, I feel like but it also could be that she has a you know a tax shelter is what it is <laughs> Our people do a lot of tax sheltering. So. They do a lot of tax sheltering. You're absolutely right. You know what? You're not wrong. That so is it could have been like Pavit who set this up and said, hey, put this in there. Exactly. <laughs> if you want me to pay for that expensive Montessori, you better start a business and then give me some tax shelter there. Exactly. Now, I do want to say that they're poor Jessel because I Googled if the No PR is a real company. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately for Jessel, there is already a company called No PR, okay, oh. K-N- K-N-O-W, Public Relations, and they're based out of D.C., so, and they do um, branding, and it's a existing company, so I don't oh. know what Jessel has going on, but um, but I will say this, that once her event starts and all of those people start showing up, I was like, well, she knows somebody, because all of these Famous Ooh, but she guess what? She has a, a LinkedIn. Oh, what's in her LinkedIn? Look at us. We're such aunties. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, right. this is no. There is a, a no. The the no PR. Uh huh. The no, no. It's not a PR. It's a branding agency founded by Natasha Rob. It's in twenty seventeen. Yeah, it's a compl- It's somebody else. There's a, there's a whole other company. Oh yes, ugh. that's okay. that's what I'm saying. All she has on her LinkedIn is the no from J- uh, July 2022 to present. And who, that's one who, calendar year. Yeah. Yeah. She might need, so, have to rebrand it. Maybe that's why she hasn't done anything about it. Exactly. So, but all those people that showed up, I mean, she obviously has to know somebody in order to get all those people in her house. Mm-hmm. Um, Jenna doesn't come. And she, to the point yeah. where they were all, all the ladies were shit talking her. At her yeah. party until all these famous people started uh, arriving. Yep. And, and then, then they all switched of a sudden to Jenna. They all, like, yeah. They switched, they switched to picking on Jenna. Well, you're all right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, Jenna, who doesn't come, she's decorating for Christmas. Je- Jessel doesn't mm-hmm. even care. She's like, yeah, she had yeah. some event at her house. Like, what's yeah. the big deal? Um, yeah. Sai comes, Uba comes, and Sai is saying how they all assumed that Jessel came from money. And that's when. Jessel says to Sai, I'm like you. I'm I work my ass off to get what I am. <laughs> By the way, apparently her uncles from London mm-hmm. came to America and they're like famous fashion photographers. So I have a feeling that Jessel got in through like Oh a, yeah. You know, you our people love nepotism. We are ready yeah. to nepotize left yeah. and right. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's love true family for business. most most groups I think, yeah. um, especially immigrant groups when they come in because you have to depend on you come because you know somebody here, um, exactly. And I'm sure that and especially Gujaratis by the way, <laughs> in oh, our, yeah. and in our people Gujaratis and Punjabis definitely do a lot of for them. sure. They are close knit, exactly. so yeah. So if her her uncles helped her. And she got a leg up, which I think she might have. I think her uncles were uh, one of the, her uncle was very famous. He was a, yeah. He is a very famous photographer, and so if she got a leg up, and then she met this another rich Punjabi guy, <laughs> and her and she figured, oh, this is easy money. Let's get married, and she got yes. married to him, and now they both are super rich, and they're going to keep you know 
nickel and diming until they are uber rich. That's what they're going to do. That's what our people do. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Aaron comes and initially at the door, they squash the beef. But I have to Mm -hmm. say, Aaron throughout this episode and previous episodes has called Jessel crazy, a lunatic, Mm -hmm. a bitch, all Mm -hmm. kinds of things. Jessel has not spoken ill about Aaron at all. She hasn't. She, Which is she the other is, thing. In the yes. l- from a viewer standpoint, how much ever Erin may be speaking about how she's victimizing herself and saying how Jessel is a monster. But from an audience perspective, the audience is enjoying the monstrosity of Jessel. They're seeing that Jessel doesn't say anything negative about Erin at most of the time. And if she if she does say anything, it is to Erin's face. Yes. And Aaron is the one that talks behind Jessel's back and has been complaining and bitching the whole time. So from an audience perspective, it's it's uh, it's Aaron who looks terrible and exactly. Jessel who looks like queen. Yes. And this is where, again, like we and she also talks shit about the wine at the place. It's not good. All this yeah, stuff. She's like, she's, like this is rancid. And she Aaron gives, it, is to, so she gives it to Bryn to taste to verify. So it's not just her saying it. And Bryn is like, this is great. <laughs> Does she say that? I thought she made a face too. No, no, Sai made a face, but oh. Bryn said, I love, I love box wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is when they all suddenly decide, oh, Jessel knows a lot of famous people. So let's stop fighting with Jessel yeah. and let's get mad at Jenna Lyons. And this yeah. is when Bryn is just unreasonably upset because she says, if I chose not to come, everybody would talk about me and blah, 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 all this stuff. Also, I have a question. Do you think Bryn picked up uh, chess literally like two days before filming that episode? Because she didn't seem like she knew what she was doing at this chess tournament. I didn't think. Yeah, I thought like she's I felt like maybe she's dating somebody who is interested in chess. So she's trying to, you know, get into it for this uh, person. I'm wondering if she was at that point dating someone that she's interested in. Maybe. Yeah. Oh. And we still haven't been to Bryn's house. We That's don't know true. where Bryn lives. We haven't, and you know what? If Bryn is like every other young person um, and Bethany was, it might be a small little apartment somewhere. Yeah, she was apparently in Domino Magazine because she decorated her apartment herself and she updated her apartment herself. And it's a tiny wow. little apartment. It's a one bedroom, but she like did all the decor. And so she was in this like magazine showing I the did interiors too. of her house. Nobody comes to my house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No one's ever wanted to come and photograph my house. Right. So what? Big deal. <laughs> so what? One of my office is always decorated with laundry that hasn't been folded. Has Bryn put together a, an IKEA furniture from scratch by herself? <laughs> even though the picture says two people on it. <laughs> and you did it with just one. Yeah. <laughs> Those little IKEA figures are so creepy looking. I know. They don't have necks. I figured out why. They don't have necks. They're like Chris Maloney, but without ne- without a neck. <laughs> don't talk about Chris Maloney that way. How dare you? I know. Ab- they're abless Chris Maloney. <laughs> no necks. With no necks. But they can, uh, they can lift and carry a lot of heavy stuff by themselves. They can. They're strong. Yes, yes they can. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway, I love this episode. I thought it was so petty. I thought it was it so was. silly. I love that we already got oh, you don't support other women women, Ramona situation. You know, we got a you're here and I'm here and you're here type It of was a, funny it, because they the way they went down, oh, you calling me uh you saying that I don't support other women and she's like, You calling me a princess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's so funny. Is this how we are going to fight now? It's going to be like you declaring what the other person is trying to say. Yes, exactly. And that <laughs> I think is so funny because nobody's actually saying, no one's actually listening to what the other person is saying. They're exactly. only translating what the other person is saying based They're on their own They're all having private experiences and just. This is the <laughs> cast of private experiences. Aaron, like... I can't believe I forgot the term private experience this whole time. I'm like, what are they doing? They're all having a private experience. <laughs> yeah, each one is in a bubble of their own experience yeah, and insecurities. Yeah, having one. Br- you know who's not having a private experience? Uba. Uh, Uba. <laughs> and Jenna. Jenna's like, yeah. I didn't want to go to this party because I want to decorate a Christmas tree and listen to Mariah Carey with my child. Yeah. yeah. Good for her. Yeah. And she's she genuinely doesn't care. She's not having... 
Aaron made a big stink about Jenna leaving and coming back and all that stuff at the Hamptons. And Jenna chose not to be angry about it. She's right. like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Exactly. It's so silly. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that's it for this episode. I'll be back later this week just to talk about Atlanta and Crappy Lake because there's no Shannon Bedore show this week. <gasps> really? Yeah, no, there's Shannon, Shannon Bedore. There's- she walked out and all production stopped. How did that happen? <laughs> she she had normal fights that paralyzed the production of the show. I felt so much for her in that moment. I felt like, oh, <laughs> poor Shannon. She truly has nobody that truly loves her other, other than her kids, I think. And yeah. I think she really needs to look for a relationship outside of all of this noise. Yeah. She truly needs to take a break from this. She hasn't taken a break, has she? No, Vicky she hasn't. And, and Tamara have. I think she needs to go on a pause, self-induced pause, and just live outside of this bubble, focus on her business, and just have look for a normal person and have a normal life for a bit. I think I that want, would that would help her. I want an ultimate girls trip with Shannon Bedore on it. That's what I need. Would you move Shannon to a different uh, different um, city? No, I think she's perfect in OC. But I would love to see her interact. Because then we don't have to have OC at all. That's what I'm trying to get. (laughs) Like, what if we moved her to Salt Lake? Salt Lake. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, did you see the trailer? Let's talk about that for a little bit. Yes. Let's talk about that quickly. You look like a trampoline is not something that I would have ever (laughs) thought that would have been a part of something. Like, it was just such a silly, silly trailer. I loved it. It was. It was so meaningless. Like, we couldn't tell. Like, everybody was fighting everybody. In every scene, it was, like, flipping and flopping, flipping and flopping. There was no – the one thing I know I'm going to get fired up is Heather telling Lisa that she shouldn't send her son on his mission because – I know. Because of the religious doctrine. And that's going to make me all fired up about to talk about, you know, because not that I want to defend Lisa, uh, Lisa's religion, but Heather has no business saying that to Lisa. Yes. But in any case, that is going to be something. Heather's continuing to be annoying. Yes. She's continuing to be a terrible person through that. Lisa seems to be up and down, up and down, up and down. So if you draw a line graph, Lisa is all over the place. I yes. don't quite understand her. Angie K seems to come in, pop, and you know has an emotional, <laughs> emotional scene with her husband. Yeah, and it's like, what are you guys talking about? What are I you know. sad about? I know. What the did new the kids girl find like... out? <laughs> that you but... you have a you have a you know a scheme going on like everybody else in Utah. I know, I know. Or and then who's going the to new... jail next? <laughs> the new girl. The new girl who looks like Asa Sultan. Like, she looks like Asa to me. She says that she was fucking beep for a year and a half. And I was like, what do you think that she got kicked out of the church for? She was a prophet. What do you think that beep was? Yeah. What do we think that beep was? Was it her grandfather? Was it her friend's (laughs) husband? Was it her stepdad? Was it her brother-in-law? Was it Coach Shaw? Yeah. Who, what was it? Who was, Who was it? it? Was yeah. it the prophet? I don't know. <laughs> was it a prophet in Atlanta? Who knows? No, I know. <laughs> was it Mr. Chocolate in Atlanta? Mr. Chocolate? <gasps> oh. Oh, my God. It was Giselle's ex-husband, Jamal Bryant. It was Harry Dubin. It was Harry Dubin. <laughs> no, not Harry <laughs> Dubin. No. Oh, no. <laughs> not Harry Dubin. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then Mary's return, Mary's Mary triumphant in, return, firing away in, on all cylinders <laughs> in her designer clothes pulled from her different closets, different bedrooms, and she's walking in, calling people inbred. It's like, okay, oh my god, right, how did we? How much did we miss Mary? Oh my god, it was so good. Do you really think yeah. I look inbred? Yes. Like yeah. I think that's But so you know good. what? Mary actually said that in the first season. Do yeah, you she remember did. her saying that she yeah. said it in the first season. Yeah. And yeah. so Heather is having her reunion fight on that particular topic now. I know. But you know what? It is what it is, Heather. Yeah. If the shoe fits, yeah. you're inbred. 
<laughs> the genealogy fits. <laughs> God, I'm excited yeah. for it to come back though, because it looks very silly, and I can't believe it's a month away. They just like threw it on us. I forgot that Salt yeah. Lake City existed, and they were like, "So then Charm is coming back too," which is Ugh. no, I'm not I'm watching not that watch. show. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, I might even talk about Below Deck again this week. I don't know. I'm really enjoying watching it again. Yeah, I started watching. I start like like you said. I watched the last two episodes, right, just to get mm-hmm. the what's what's the problematic stuff. And I was like, whoa, this is actually interesting. I, these characters are interesting. See, I don't every time I want to watch Below Deck, but then I get um, Sandy comes on and then it just throws me off. I cannot. But stand Down that Under woman. doesn't have Sandy, so it's that's yes. why I enjoy watching it. Yes. And Jason is so handsome. Yes. The so, captain. And he's so good. Oh my God. He's so nice. I know. Yeah. And so, I was wondering like, how it was. Uh, I wondered if it was so, it almost felt coincidental that just as Bethany is talking about how Bravo ill treats people, this yeah. episode of Billow Deck dropped and Bravo got all the kudos for it. Yeah, they did until they were like, here's Joao. <laughs> yeah, until Joao gets <laughs> 